สวัสดีครับ Good afternoon everyone um, my name is Sarah Pop Pathanan and investor relations from Advanced Info Service or AAS Thailand um, so uh, it's our honor Uh, to be here and thanks the Stock Exchange of Thailand for inviting us to this um, digital roadshow for the first time. So um, for advance, we just announced our fiscal year 2017 results um, last month in February. So I think it's a good chance for us to come and update to, um, especially foreign institutional investors uh, globally. So. Let me start with the overall outlook of our business today. Um, AAS, we are the digital life service provider. Uh, basically, we are operating three core businesses, consisting of one mobile um, business. We are the number one player in the market with revenue market share of 48%. Um, the second business is the fixed broadband. This is a new business that we just started four years ago. Um, in terms of market share, we are now the smallest one, 6% market share, but the growth um, is highest in the industry. The last one is the digital service, um, more toward medium to long term. Uh, basically, this is the new areas of business that we see that we can penetrate uh, into in order to serve customer uh, lifestyle in the digital world. So we have identified several areas of digital services that we would like to offer um, the products and services to customers. Um, those are starting from video content, um, mobile money, IoT, as well as the enterprise cloud um, business. So I would like to come back to the mobile business a little bit, uh, just to highlight to some key points there. Um, so in terms of revenue breakdown, as you can see from the left-hand side uh, bar chart, We nowadays have almost 60% of revenue um, coming from non-voice. Uh, most of this non-voice revenue is from data consumption. So customers play, uh, serve data on 4G, 3G, um, and then voice is now at 33% of the total revenue pie, um, as well as the 2.4% contribution from fixed broadband, which is growing uh, quite high recently. In terms of Subscriber breakdown, you can see that in the second bar chart there, 82% of our subscribers continue to be on uh, prepaid uh, subscription base, while 18% of customers are on postpaid. Uh, overall, telecom in Thailand, uh, we are seeing double-digit growth in postpaid um, segment for the last three years at least, while prepaid um, actually has been uh, flat or uh, declining slightly. Basically, it's being driven by customers' behavior who would like to use uh, recurring data consumption. Uh, so instead of going to top up on a daily or a weekly basis, they're prone to be on the postpaid uh, subscription plan. Um, and also, uh, despite the fact that postpaid subscriber is only 18%, the contribution in terms of revenue is as large as almost 40% nowadays. Uh, while prepaid market contribute around 55% of the revenue. So the goal for us for the long term is to be able to mark leadership in the mobile data. So we are nowadays providing 4G, 3G and 2G network nationwide. And our main focus is the network quality. So coming to the fixed broadband, as I said earlier, we are now at 6% market share. Uh, in terms of the service coverage, we are present in 50 cities around Thailand. And uh, in terms of home pass, we now have six home pass around Thailand. Um, our long-term goal, or maybe medium-term uh, goal, by 2020, we would like to become one of the significant players uh, in Thailand. And that implies the market share by subscriber of around 20 to 25%. Um, The strategy to go to that, in short, is that we are providing the fiber technology, FTTX, uh, fiber to the home, to the condominium, to the building, while majority of the market today is using ADSL technology. So we see um, that demand coming from both existing customers as well as new customers. And at the same time, uh, we are leveraging our core fiber infrastructure from mobile Uh, to be able to offer very cost-optimized um, uh, fixed broadband service. 
Um, and at the same time, coming to the digital service, this area uh, is not only uh, operating by itself, standalone, but we look at this uh, more like new growth that can complement to our existing businesses as well. So you'll see a lot that we tie the video content into our mobile and fixed broadband services uh, so that uh, we are a lot stronger in terms of the convergence product proposition nowadays. So that's the, the overall business we are doing today. Uh, moving on to maybe very briefly in terms of recap of last year, if you look at the top left there, you see that last year we grew almost 5% year on year in terms of revenue. Uh, and look at the breakdown, almost 40% of that revenue incremental came from, from fixed broadband. And this highlights um, the fact uh, that we are uh, now integrated uh, player in the market and fixed broadband has been a new growth area contributing to the overall picture. Uh, mobile itself grew 3.1% year on year. Uh, next box show the a conclusion or a summary picture of the competition last year. You see in terms of mobile, um, look at the prepaid versus postpaid subscription net ad. You see we lost almost 2 million customers on prepaid, but we grew almost 1 million on postpaid. Net net, we are seeing ARPU improvement of almost 5% uh, along the year. Uh, and that was mainly driven by the increasing 4G penetration and uh, data users postpaid segment. Uh, on fixed broadband, last year we implemented quite a lot of measures to ensure that we are acquiring quality subscribers. Um, so look at the net additions in the second half of last year. It might not be very exciting, but overall we are seeing um, more good quality customers on our base and that reflected in the ARPU improvement uh, from 510 baht in 2016 up to 635 baht in 2017. Um, next one, the highlight is on the cost op optimization that we have been uh, running continuously. So we highlighted here two points. One is on the operational cost of service. Um, so this includes network operating expense, regulatory fee, uh, as well as depreciation. Oh, okay, we, we exclude depreciation and amortization here uh, for for better com comparison picture. So the cost increased only 4.2% year on year. And actually, if we strip out uh, some costs, especially on the payments to TOT for apples to apples comparison, we uh, we're seeing a declining of 16% year on year in terms of the cost of service. Uh, the same picture happened in the SGNA as well. The cost declined 16% year on year, mainly from the um, more well managed, hence the subsidies uh, and our focus on the quality revenue. So, overall, in terms of the cost here, uh, we know quite well that after the last two years of spectrum auction, the industry uh, is now bearing qu quite high cost structure. So it's very clear that all operators now uh, are focusing on optimizing the cost in many areas um, as much as possible and look at more um, profitable uh, profitability uh, for running the business. And that reflect uh, as well for AAS in the last box there, you see our EBITDA improved 16% year on year. Uh, now at 70 billion baht or a margin of around 44.7 percent uh, while serving out DNA uh, interest and tax our net net profit after tax uh, was quite stabilized at around 30 billion so that was a recap of last year uh, I'll come back to the guidance uh, soon so I'll go for maybe the key strategies for each business first. So if we come back to mobile again, this year basically we are seeing more growth coming from 4G penetration uh, as well as more data consumption on the video streaming. So uh, with our integrated proposition, we are now able to offer both mobile fixed broadband and video content at the same time. 
So this year there will be a lot more um, plans and activities that will be focusing on a lot in terms of conversion products. So you look on the right hand side, which is a breakdown by technology. Today, almost half of our sub base are using 4G on a recurring basis. So we expect this number to continue going up. And at the same time, the ARPU and the VOU uh, should also uh, improve this year, given stabilized competition. Uh, the bottom part, just to highlight that, as I mentioned earlier, the growth in the mobile for the last two, three years has been driven by postpaid uh, segment growth. So the subscriber um, contribution growth, you look at the middle bar shot there, actually last year uh, postpaid grew 15% from sub sub, while prepaid declined 5%. Similar to the revenue, postpaid grew 16% while prepaid drop 4%. Um, just to give you some more color for our strategy this year, uh, the conversions that I mentioned earlier, basically uh, this year we will be using um, a lot of data analytics that the new technology allow us to, to access to customers inside uh, like never before. So we'll be able to learn the customer's behavior, how they consume data, what kind of application they use, what kind of content they consume, and that will translate into uh, more targeted uh, individual price plans um, along this year. Actually, uh, earlier this year, we have also launched the new kind of prepaid SIM um, scheme. We call it the one SIM. Uh, this is one lesson that we learned that in the past, prepaid uh, segment has been um, driven by a lot of price plans, actually m several hundreds uh, to particularly for really each segment. And that uh, has been complicating how uh, we are selling our products in the market and sometimes customers are confused. Uh, so we have come up with this new uh, kind of thinking. We call it the one sim. Uh, so customers now for prepaid, they don't need to choose anything uh, from the shop. So they just buy this the one sim and they uh, go select the price plan inside uh, as they wish. Um, that's how we, we, we are trying to simplify uh, the product that we launch. Of course, the bundling packages, uh, handset subsidies, we believe that it's going to continue in the market um, for prepaid to postpaid conversion, as well as to retain um, exist existing, existing medium to high-end customers as well. But uh, overall, we are expecting more of this stabilized competition uh, this year. Uh, fixed broadband conversions, I have touched upon that already, but some interesting data point here. Nowadays, almost 80% of our AIS fiber customers are also holding AIS mobile SIM. So uh, this has given us kind of an early uh, glimpse of uh, how we see uh, the market has moved. Um, and we this year try to strengthen this number 80% uh, to be more um, kind of tied up with AS products and services. Uh, so you see uh, later on how we will approach this group of customers. Of course, overall, these product and services that I explained must be supported by good or great network quality as well as um, superior brand perception. So you see on the bottom left there, in terms of the network quality, we really ensure that we are number one in the market. So in terms of the speed test um, and the CapEx investment that we have been putting in uh, into our network, it really um, proves that we are number one. But in terms of the brand perception, um, need to admit that in several segments, we uh, need to catch up our competitor. Uh, so we will working a lot on, on that this year. Uh, to make sure that we mark our leadership back in this mobile data space. Maybe I'll skip this or and maybe come back later. Moving on to the fixed broadband business, which is uh, this an, another core business that we just started four years back. So if you look at the top part there, this explains the overall um, fixed broadband industry in Thailand. 
uh, in terms of the penetration now uh, is already exceeding 37% of the total households in Thailand. So almost 8 million households are now connected uh, through either XDSL technology or fiber technology. Also, there are four players, four key players in the market. Um, one is True Online, the second one is 3BB of Jasmine, three is uh, TOT and some other um, players, and the last one is AS Fiber, which is now at 6% in terms of sub-market share. So you look at the right-hand side there, we show the ARPU uh, of the three main operators. You see that our ARPU has been on a, a an increasing trend along the year, and, and this mainly comes from two factors. One, I would say, is because we have uh, a lot better brand perception in the market. Um, so in terms of the service quality that we ensure uh, and the um, technology that we provide to customers, uh, the fiber actually has helped uh, bring, bring up the ARPU uh, improvement there. And at the same time, uh, we are new in the market, so earlier, few years back we have been quite aggressive in terms of acquiring customers so been giving a lot of discounts now it's been those discounts have, have been expired so we see an improving trend in terms of our pool looking looking at the bottom part there um, subscriber the six percent market share translates to around 521,000 subscribers net addition I explained already that latter half of last year we uh, implemented a lot of measures to ensure uh, the quality acquisition and that has resulted in some kind of um, slowdown in terms of net additions uh, but that comes with the better um, better quality of, of customers for 2018 for a fixed broadband we have quite challenging target this year so we would like to have subscriber in total of 800,000 subscribers uh, coming up from 521,000 so with this level of subscriber scale we would be able to uh, see positive EBIT uh, so um, as well as continue to enhance on the growth and the brand value uh, through the conversions product proposition so how can we achieve that 800,000? First one in terms of coverage and expansion, we need to make sure that areas that we penetrate or market uh, this fixed broadband, there must be sufficient demand for fiber. So before we go penetrate into each area, we need to um, gauge the customer demand, uh, go down to the market and do some kind of survey uh, and as well as tracking from our postpaid mobile base as well so that we can uh, know uh, firstly where to penetrate into. So now we are present in 50 cities um, and you look at the investment last year we spent 5 billion, this year will be 6 billion uh, which is um, compared regarding the size compared to the mobile is a lot less. Uh, so mainly this one will be for blast mile connections which um, connecting the fiber from the splitter or, or the node to the customer's premise. In terms of sales, technical and supports as well, we need to continue to improve. So this year, um, we have acquired Sales Locks Info, our sister company, to um, strengthen, uh, one is on the enterprise uh, business segment, as well as the other one is on the fixed broadband uh, business. That CSL also has expertise in terms of condominium broadband that they are doing. So we'll be, uh, we'll be seeing more synergy from CSL to help us uh, penetrate into more condominium uh, market this year. In terms of service efficiency, now we um, kind of guarantee customers that if the customer calls in to, to subscribe, to register for the fiber, and if they are under our coverage, it will take uh, not more than 20, uh, two, two days or 48 hours for installation. Uh, we actually have also integrated the engineering team from the Network Operations Center uh, with the call center to work together so that we can identify, uh, in many cases, 
uh, the connectivity problems, the signal problems before customers themselves even know so that we are more, more proactive to help uh, solve issues for customers. This is the, the price plan that we are offering today. So you see top to bottom, uh, we price them in terms of um, the uh, connectivity plus content uh, and conversions basis. So the top one is the pure fiber connectivity starting from 590 baht, uh, speed of 30 megabits per second for download and 10 megabits per second for, for upload. And if you are a AS mobile customer, you'll get 10% discount. Uh, in the middle one, we add the AS Play box, which is the content um, IPTV box that we uh, install for customers. Customers need to pay 100 baht more compared to the pure connectivity one. Uh, but they can watch more than 100 free channels nowadays, as well as some kind of premium content uh, like HBO, Fox, um, and lately CNN, Cartoon Network, everything um, additionally. And the last part is the real convergence uh, kind of phase two that we launched in the market last year. So we provide fixed broadband, uh, mobile data sim, as well as the play box with content. Um, so so that to so in or, in order to in order to really focus on the value uh, customer segment. So um, down to the digital service business. As I mentioned earlier, that we identified four areas that we uh, will expand into. The digital content one is actually been been a lot of movement uh, in the last two years. So last year you saw that we partnered with HBO, right, and uh, some other premium international world class contents, as well as the partnerships that we co work with the local um, Thai content providers, for example, Gram GMM Grammy uh, to to broadcast their concerts uh, live on our mobile and fixed broadband platform. Uh, or WorkPoint, uh, we did make several episodes uh, on, the, on the famous um, variety shows that WorkPoint um, broadcast. Uh, and that really draws uh, attraction from, from local customers, from Thai customers. Um, and this year we'll, we'll be doing a lot more in terms of uh, acquiring new local content uh, creators or providers um, to really help them, co-work with them, and broadcast their content on our platform. So digital content initially, it has helped in terms of um, differentiation in the market. So instead of doing only handset subsidies, uh, we have been trying to gear the industry toward more um, competing in terms of more value um, proposition. And as well as it helps in terms of retention um, uh, and also a new acquisition from this uh, new content. In terms of enterprise, um, I touched upon already that we acquired CSL earlier uh, this year. Now we are holding, we, we already bought 80% um, of the total CSL outstanding shares. Um, by the end of, by, by mid of this year, all process uh, in terms of delisting CSL from the stock exchange uh, should be completed. So um, CSL themselves will hold an HM end of March and uh, shareholders will have the right to vote whether they would like to veto, uh, not allow CSL to be delisted or uh, not veto. So, so uh, let's wait and see, but we think it should be no problem. So in the price service for AS, actually almost around 10% of our revenue um, comes from the enterprise service, meaning that we um, serve, uh, we provide voice calls, uh, mobile data with the contracted phones to corporates. But nowadays, with the acquisition of CSL and our um, um, keen to penetrate into this market, we are talking about providing new services like cloud, um, data centers, um, software as a service, up to managed services. Uh, that now we have expertise uh, to provide. So 
our aspirational target is to have the revenue contribution from enterprise business uh, up from 9 to 10 percent last year to 25 percent by 2020. Um, the third one is on the mobile payment platform. Again, just last week that we announced that we went into invest in a JV. Uh, this JV earlier uh, had two major shareholders. One is Rapid Line Pay. The second one is Rapid Payment System uh, held by VGI and BTS Group. We are the third party into this JV. So uh, we bought one third of the total stake uh, amounting to almost 800 million baht. The strategic objective for this um, joint venture is basically to to provide an engaging um, e-payment platform for all Thai users. So we're not only talking about AAS mobile users, but we we are expanding scope of customers to uh, anyone who will, who would like to use e-payment platform. So we have our subsidiary subsidiary MP who will be working closely um, with the Rapid uh, Line Pay as well as the VGI uh, BTS group. Uh, so I think we'll, we'll see a lot more um, activities along the year. Now, in terms of the the service itself, if you are using the MPay e-wallet, uh, we will encourage you to migrate uh, from MPay to use the Rapid Line Pay, which is uh, more of the convenient platforms. Uh, and you'll be um, getting a lot of privileges uh, there. Uh, lastly, it's on the Internet of Things uh, or IoT. This is toward more of the long term and we need to talk about the ecosystem of the IoT uh, because as the name uh, implies, right? IoT, Internet of Things. So we are talking about connectivities uh, among millions of devices in the upcoming future so it's kind of kind of pre 5g um, technology that operators as well as vendors um, and related uh, organizations are trying to come up with a new solutions to to serve um, current customer lifestyles so example we are talking about a lot smart home smart metering um, smart car uh, the, the obvious one would be our products uh, launched lately, the Mobike, which is the um, bicycle that you can rent and pay on mobile. Uh, and you now we have trial in, the, in, in some universities. So this Internet of Things will um, give, kind of pave the way uh, that we will be able to um, secure new revenue stream uh, in the future. Um, so o overall, it's, it's, it's the uh, new areas that we are seeing. So this is more explanation on the Syslogs Info. Um, if there is any question, I'm more than willing to, to answer. But I'll go back lastly on the um, guidance for 2018. Basically, in terms of service revenue, excluding IC, we are guiding 7 to 8% improvement year on year, and 2% of which will come from the consolidation of CS Locks Info. So, on a AS standalone basis, we are seeing a growth of 5 to 6%. Of course, it's a combination from both mobile and fixed broadband um, business growth. Sales revenue, we are guiding uh, that the amount should uh, is expected to decline and make near zero margin. Basically, we are looking um, at the industry uh, this year to be more cautious in terms of spending in the subsidies. So the sales revenue should decline. And the EBITDA margin should be improving to 45 to 47%. Last year, we were at 44.7. So Apart from the revenue improvement, we continue to do the cost management. Um, I think areas that we can continue to improve is one on the network operating expense. Um, we have actually hired a consultant to help us identify in all areas uh, where we can do the cost optimization. Give you an example. Um, it can be really simple like renegotiation with the vendors or um, with the landlord that we uh, rent the base station or as advanced as how we 
plan in terms of network implementation, how we can maximize the spectrum uh, frequency we have nowadays to cope with the increasing data demand um, in the future, uh, and how we are going to install the equipment that can uh, easily uh, configure how we will provide 4G, 3G, and 2G. So that has uh, helped us in terms of the cost side. Um, CapEx, we, we guide on the cash outflow. So this year we are guiding 35 to 38 billion, down from last year, uh, 32 billion. Um, this basically, a big portion will go to 4G capacity enhancement, and 6 billion out of which will be for fixed broadband. And lastly, dividend policy, we maintain minimum 70% of our net profit. So maybe I'll stop there. If, if, if there's um, any questions from, from the viewers, uh, please send your questions to us and I'll be more than willing to, to answer. I'm making a tea up. <laughs>